People have been asking in the comments how we managed to fit Sonic 3D's full screen video cinematic into a cartridge. Let's have a look at the FMV and then I'll explain how we did it. The standard screen size on this console is around 320 pixels wide and 224 pixels tall. Doing a bit of maths, we can see that a 320 by 224 screen at pixels uses approximately 72K. The intro is 12 and a half seconds long, which at 30 frames a second and 72K a frame would eat 27 megabytes of cartridge space, which isn't great considering the Sonic cartridge is only 4 megabytes and most of that is taken up with the rest of the game. So what do we do? Well, for a start, the animation is slightly shorter than full screen at just 200 pixels. Also, it's only 16 colours, so it only takes half a byte to store a pixel, which all means that now the screen only takes 32K. Also, the intro actually runs at around 15 frames a second. But even if we take into account all of that, it would still be 50% bigger than the whole cartridge. So then we turn to compression. We use something called RNC compression, which struck a nice balance between speed of compression and size. It generally yielded around a 3 to 1 compression ratio, but was too slow to decompress a whole screen quicker than around 5 frames a second, so more drastic measures were needed. So here's a look at the biggest image we could work with. This is just 80 pixels tall, and we're using the 256 pixel wide screen mode as well. So how do we make this look acceptable? Well the first thing we did is use horizontal interrupts to repeat lines of the image, effectively stretching it out two and a half times its original size and so filling the screen again. But what are all those vertical lines? Well, because we only had 16 colours to work with, we wanted to use dithering, which is a kind of checkerboard pattern to simulate half colours. But the dithering patterns made compression less effective, so we decided to use vertical lines, which were easier to compress, and then offset every even horizontal line by one pixel, which makes the checkerboard dither pattern we wanted. Doing this at this stage also made the image look higher resolution than the 80 pixels it was stored at. Now, if we offset every odd numbered line instead of the evens, the pattern shifts slightly. Then we could alternate back and forth between the two, and when we did this at 60 frames a second, we got a pretty convincing set of extra colours, and a pretty good image considering how it started. So taking a look at the maths again, we can see that our 80 pixel image is now down to just 10k. Adding in our compression gets us to around 3.5k. Multiply that all through and we end up with a total size of around 660k, which nicely fit into the space I'd set aside for the intro. All this was a surprise to Sega. I'd been saving space the whole project to try something like this, and we only dropped in the animation with a few weeks to go. Luckily, they liked it.